This is the Hidden Leaf Village's handsome devil, Rock Lee, and you're watching Anime Egotist. After this, you can do 51 sit-ups or watch 51, all 51 episodes of Rock Lee and his ninja pals. Rock Lee. Leaf Hurricane! <laughs> And welcome back to the Anime Egotist, where no professor should trust us with a starter Pokemon. You got me, Alex, and I'm joined by the man himself. And I'm Richard. That's and right. today we're here to review the My Hero Academia third movie. Oh, yeah, it sucked. <laughs> Moving on. Anyways, but we are here to talk about movies. We're here to talk about the Pokemon Secrets of the Jungle movie, Coco, or mm -hmm. whatever it's called. Yeah, but we... And, we would like to do more Pokemon reviews, but I'm starting to think that we might have to do those separately just because of all the stuff going on. But we decide, you know what? We tease stuff like this. Let's give it a chance. And this movie, I think it's very obvious that some people don't necessarily love that these movies are getting different canon moments from the show. Because the show, at least, it was like, oh, it's Ash, Missy, and Brock doing this in the movies, or Ash, May, Brock, mm -hmm. and Max do this, etc. But now it's just Ash, and a lot of people don't seem on board for that, especially since it seems like some of these movies are just remakes of, like, Ash's Beginning or just mm -hmm. different stuff like that. Because this movie felt a lot like Pokemon Forever in the terms of its environmental message and everything. That being said, though, I vastly preferred this movie to Pokemon Forever. I actually thought it was a pretty I, good movie. I tend to agree with that. Um, it's... How to put it? They don't kind of force it in the end, like how they force Celebi to die in the fourth movie. They and then come back. It's like this. They have a message, but don't try to force it down everybody's throats like a lot of these movies kind of do. Well, I'd say so because Celebi barely appeared in this movie. It was barely mentioned. Yep. But overall, a solid movie. I, I thought it did a pretty good, good job. So let's, I guess we just hop, we should just more or less hop into it. So what do we start with? So I guess we'll start with the beginning scene. So I don't remember if it actually says this, but it's pretty much 10 years ago is where it starts. Um, we might as well. The, and we end up with um, the Zerud, which are the main, I guess, Pokemon for this movie. Um, are terrorizing the other Pokemon that live in the jungle and then one wanders off on its own and finds a human baby in a kind of weird thing. Skate pod, I don't really know what to call it. Yeah, and it wants to get rid of it at first, but then it's kind of like, oh, this thing needs me. So it, it basically decides to take care of it and all the others are rude who can, prop who can talk to each other, which okay, sure. Or uh, they basically say no. You can't take care. You can't bring this thing here because they're super territorial for reasons that are actually pretty justified. Once you, once we mm -hmm. get further into the movie, so he leaves the tribe. I mean, there the elder is pretty. I'd say pretty easy on him compared to all the others. So he takes the baby. Mm -hmm. He raises it through some shenanigans. There are a lot of fart jokes in the beginning of this movie. Like it's just oh, this baby. It smells like a like a whatever what a stunky's a rear end tank. Like, yeah <laughs> yeah and a stuck and a stunky gets scared and it poos like there there are a lot, there were a lot of uh, like three or four of those jerks jokes so yeah and i'm like oh dear please don't keep mm -hmm. doing that but oh but it starts transitioning to everything the baby gets older it's named his name is coco etc etc mm -hmm. and then so, we get sorry go ahead go go for it yeah i was gonna say that we jump 10 years pretty much um yeah, i think it's like in one scene and uh now coco is a 10 year old kid being who speaks with pokemon because he was raised by pokemon so it's kind of like those feral kids that you see every so often so uh, it's like it, so it's basically like tarzan or that one episode of pokemon with the really awful parents mm -hmm, where they drop their kid out of a helicopter yeah because that's what most parents do anyway and uh, he's able to communicate with the Zaru, and he base and so far everything's well normal for a Pokemon movie, and then of mm -hmm. course we get to we get to our dear friend Ash, isn't that right? Yeah, which I will admit in this movie Ash has actually done really well. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I, it kind of bothers me. It, it kind of bothers me though that the only Pokemon we see him with is Pikachu. Though he never, he doesn't seem to show off any of his others. That is very true. Yeah. Because yeah. he, he caught, really remember he caught. Because he, oh, remember he caught Pokemon in Pokemon I Choose You, which. Oh god, I, I don't, I don't want to talk about that movie on the channel, but we're gonna have to. Anyways, though, he's talking on the phone with his mom, and his mom's being, like, super protective. Like, do you have underwear, Pikachu's food, all this other sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. He basically runs he runs off, tries to catch some Pokemon, and he sees these scientists conducting these experiments. And the assistant was named Sharon. It was either Sharon or Shannon. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I, they're just kind of... Uh, testing the water at this point as far as we've seen sharon okay yeah. with sharon yep anyways sharon. so basically he's he's basically looking around and and how does he do you remember how he encounters coco off the top of your head um i think he's trying to catch a pokemon and uh happens to just run into Coco or something. It's oh, that's right. Oh. Because the whole forest was ran was pretty much out of berries and everything. And thanks to all the other Zarud were going crazy trying to get food. Basically having the mindset of, oh well, we're the strong, so we're supposed to take stuff from the weak. That basically that sort of thing. And Coco kind of run runs off and he hit and oh that's right, he hits the pipe. He hits mm -hmm. that pipe out of nowhere and Ash jumps into the water and saves him. And takes them to, I find it funny that they took them to the Pokemon Center. It's like, oh, you're fine now. I'm like, I feel like an actual hospital probably would have been better than, uh, whatever, whatever. Hospitals are useless in this they, place. Well, from my understanding, it, they still use the American healthcare system in uh, the Pokemon universe for humans. Yeah, and that works out so well for us. Just wait till you get the bill, Coco. But Coco basically runs off, but he, and... Through some shenanigans, he starts running through the street. People's Pokemon get loose, all this other stuff. One of those kids, mm -hmm. one of those extras, looked suspiciously like a really young Misty. It was weird. It was really weird to see. I don't remember that, but yeah, it's been like, a few weeks since I saw the movie all the way through. Yeah. A anyways, though, so oh, Ash kind of slows him down. He's like, oh, you can understand Pokemon because you're able to stop all this chaos and everything. And... and he pulls out the Pokeball like, oh, you've never seen this before? And Coco licks the Pokeball all and starts sniffing. And that's what Ash is like, what? What's, what are you doing? And I'm thinking, Ash, all these other acrobatics and everything and all this crazy sort of stuff, you don't seem to notice. But the second he licks the Pokeball, you're like, ooh, this, this, guy, this kid might be kind of strange. Yeah, but we start getting the kind of uh, George of the Jungle... Um, maybe jungle to jungle is another example where it's kid or person raised in wild discovers humanity and what it involves so you get all the he's trying ice cream and seeing everything so oh that da that dance that that like middle scene dance number made me laugh i thought it was funny with the exception of the people actually dancing in the audience those people did not look like they knew what they were doing true but they, I will. But I choreographed that, so <laughs> I was about to say I will confirm they are way better at dancing than Richard is because that that is shameful to see. Yeah. Overall, though, he rescues a Pokemon from the fire from like a fireworks cannon or something like that, and, and we mm -hmm. forgot to mention Team Rocket is in this movie, and they're doing the ever they're doing something really different this time. They're trying to catch Pikachu. Yeah. So. Well, that's kind of like the first part of it. Then their whole arc kind of changes to wanting to steal the research for Team Rocket. And yeah. we'll get to that as we talk, get closer also, to the end of the story. Also, Jesse's outfit was sleeveless. Nice. Yes. Which is kind of nice to think about because it's one of those things where since they're in the jungle, it's supposed to be hot and humid and tropical so it's going to be uh one of those things where that makes sense she would want to stay co uh, cooler probably there yeah but overall the movie continues we get our little montage uh, and everything and they had and basically coco seems like he's slowly starting to acclimate himself to the human world but he he notices that a parent and child are walking together and he kind 
and he goes back to the jungle with Pikachu, Ash, and there's a Squovit, right? That it because it keeps getting yeah, involved. That's like his best friend. Yeah, basically. So they encounter Zer they encounter Zerud again, and all of us and they know this. It's like okay, so but, but to back up a little bit, Coco believes he's a Pokemon. He's he's a Pokemon, or at least his dad tries to convince him. You are a Pokemon. You're set. Hey, you you mm -hmm. can't do all these moves yet, but someday you will. So they basically call him out on and says, "Well, how come how come you've never? Am I a human? Am I a human? You need to be up front with me." And Zarude's actually kind of open about it. like, "Oh I, yeah, um, I did my best to raise you. Supposedly these are your parents. Supposedly these are your parents." And I will say, I really liked how. Because I've talked about before, I don't like the sudden fight where everybody starts hating each other as leading up to the part three of the, or the finale of the show or movie. But they got that right out of the way. And it seemed less about anger and more about confusion. So Ash basically mm -hmm. says, hey, let's help find your parents. Let's, let's sleep here first and then we'll go get your parents and everything. Yeah. Uh, I do like how, going back to the very beginning, so part of what uh, Zarud was doing was also looking for Coco's parents and trying to uh, bring them back together. And we get scenes in pretty much almost every single place that we will see throughout the entire movie of him actually searching. And it, it's actually like he tried his best to find this kid's parents. Yeah, it's not like that trope of, oh, I'm just too tough. And so I'm not going to take care of this kid because people will think I'm weak. It's I don't know if I'm able to do this, so let me actually try something else. It is a nice mm -hmm. touch. Also, we learn in a flashback that there's this rufflet that's injured, or Zarud can, can basically heal it using the powers of the forest, or something along those lines. But the second mm -hmm. he said it drains your life force, I thought to myself, oh, that's not going to, that's, is that going to play into something later? But we'll get to that. Also, we learn a little bit of trivia about Ash, don't we? Yeah, his dad's actually mentioned in this movie. Yeah, it's the first time he has ever mentioned his dad. He's just like, oh, my dad said go for your dreams or something like that. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know, I was kind of, I, I thought, because I didn't get spoiled on anything for this movie before I saw it. People saw the Japanese version. I didn't. I just said, let's just stick with the English version. I'm like, oh, I wonder what they're going to tell us. And I'm like, oh, that's it you know get a flashback or a picture or a disembodied voice or something like that it's just oh just keep going after your dreams it's like hey and, it, and ashley even pointed out it's like oh everybody laughed at me i'm like people in the pokemon world laughed that you wanted to be a pokemon master sure why not that ma makes sense yeah so yeah, I, we could have at least gotten like a, a flashback to a picture of his dad and have his face covered if they still don't want to reveal anything to us about who it is. I mean, they seemingly do that all the time with the game protagonist in Pokemon Evolution, specifically Callum from X and Y. So maybe Callum <laughs> is his dad and he's just a time traveler. I don't know. Could be. <laughs> yeah, they have the they basically have the same set of clothes in X and Y, but off topic. So they find the picture, or they're looking around and everything, and Team Rocket is basically getting told at the at the lab, hey, don't go in that other room, don't go in that other room, which is basically code mm -hmm. for something's in there. You you don't look at it. Wink, wink, wink. It's <sighs> yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's Professor uh, Zed. Zed's uh private room uh that they tell people not to get in. Go into what? so they're they volunteered to work for the it's like Aether Foundation or something like that, but I don't remember what it's actually called. The yeah. what they yeah. call their company. Yeah, I, I I don't either. But anyway, anyway, so they get to they get to the lab and it's discovered and they basically look around and it's discovered that that uh, Doctor I almost said Lord Zed from Power Rangers because that's where my mind is right now. Basically, Zed says, "Hey, your name's not Coco. Your name's Al. Your parents, your parents died in a car crash." Which I thought, uh, what, a couple things. One, a car crash, of course, because every seemingly everybody dies is an anime off screen. It's like, oh, it's a car crash, something like that. 
Second of all, second of all, that's not the end of this story, is it? Are they lying to us about the car crash? Turns out, not completely, but uh, Coco we'll also, <laughs> yeah, Coco also has this necklace that they try and scan, and they find the area in the jungle basically where where all the where the Zaru are living with all its heat and the tree because the tree has healing mm-hmm. properties, which is why basically why the Zaru want to keep everybody out. Oh, all of mm-hmm. a sudden they're like, "Hey, you have to take us to it." But Coco decides to leave, and Ash goes off with him, only to find out that when Co- when Zed put his hands on Coco to try and talk to him, he put a tracker on his shirt or je- the shirt that he put got earlier during the montage, which lasts a lot yeah. longer than I thought it would. Have. Yeah. So they uh, Coco runs off upset about this whole uh, finding out his parents are dead and that well he's also he feels like he's hurt his relationship with his only other father figure which is the Zerud. oh i thought it was ash well that's more of a brother thing i think Eh, sure why not sure why not but 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 he runs off upset and a giant mechanical spider thing comes after them yeah that the whole team of scientists use the tracker and start chasing him uh and you start noticing that zed is a little demented at this point oh a little bit are a little bit you you sure about that this is the point that you start that he starts showing it (laughs) that's the thing yeah he's basically running around like uh like, hey, we have to get this tree, and it's basically th- th- this is some pretty heavy stuff. Five, four, three, two. It's basically discovered that at what's his name's parents, Coco, Coco or Al's parents, the Moldib Molabendum. I I don't know how to pronounce that. At, mm-hmm. at, the Molabendums were basically saying, hey, hey, it belongs to the Pokemon. If we interfere too much, something could go wrong. Um, um, and it could cause harm to them. So we're not going to do that. While Zed's like, no, we have to keep going. We have to keep going. He basically chases them off in his own car or while they're fleeing in their own. And they basically crash their car, send Coco away, and it's hev- and the car explodes, basically. And it's heavily implied that it was like a pit maneuver or something by Zed to, uh, that took them out. Yeah, she, and and Team Rocket is actually the ones who discover that it's because they get into the lab while Ash and Coco are dealing with the giant robot spider. Mm-hmm. So we're starting to get into the big climax of the movie. Yeah. Um, this is where I had one little bit of an issue with it. Okay. You know how, because Zed said, oh, well, if we get those healing properties, we can help all sorts of people. We could help people are in people are in danger. We could be helping them. Forget about Pokemon. My problem is why? Why? Like if 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 he had just said, "Oh, in the name of science or to further my own career," that would have been fine. But nobody po- humans weren't known for there wasn't like a sickness going on. People weren't necessarily hurt or dying or anything like that. So why are you saying humanity needs this so badly when everything seems like it's fine right now? I, I don't know. It's it's a little bit of a nitpick, but at the same time, it just would have made a little more sense if it was a goal for something. Maybe he lost somebody early on in his life, something along those lines. Yeah, it, it does feel like there's something missing, like that would have caused the obsession uh, for them. Uh, I don't know. Again, as you said, losing someone, it could be that. I mean, yeah, there's just something missing. I don't know what. For yeah, don't get me wrong. I appreciate them making a villain that's pretty much just unlikable that you actually really want to hate. But it was just kind of a, like, why do we have to help people? Why do we have to help people? Everybody seems fine right now. But anyways, the Zarud all show up and start attacking the th- and start attacking Robo Spider. And they're not doing so well against it, which kind of baffles me because I'm like, you're all legendary mythical Pokemon. You can't take out this giant thing. Ash and his friends would have been able to do that in their sleep on a regular basis in the anime. What's taking y'all so long? Yeah, and so, well, the main, I guess, troop of Zarud, I think is the correct term, Yeah, is fighting. Um, they, uh, 
the Zeru that was his dad. I guess I'll just call it the dad as Zeru because that's yes, what dad, it's dad. supposed to be called. <laughs> is uh, goes and asks the other Pokemon for help, not to help the Zeru, but to help Coco, pretty much. And yeah. then, so they he brings pretty much reinforcements in the form of uh, all of the jungle Pokemon we've seen in like flashbacks or in other scenes. Yeah, like like the Flygon that got healed, which I'm like, why is a Flygon hanging out in the forest? Shouldn't it be like in the desert somewhere? Yeah, details, details. Yeah, the, I, I guess that's fair. And Zaru, and I, I guess I'm with you, Dada ends up getting hurt, like, really, really badly. And these aren't, like, little cuts or scratches. Like, you actually see some pretty harsh harsh of its, like, wounds. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Hey, yeah, and they had Pokemon, they were bad. Yeah. Yeah, and they ended up taking it away, and they take it to the healing center. But the giant spider, Robo Spider, ended up doing damage to the doing damage to the tree. All the while, all the other scientists are like, "You know, maybe what we're doing is wrong." And I'm like, "No, duh. This isn't a redemption arc for you guys. This is not. This isn't good enough in my eyes." Hey, but they get Dada to the spring, and all of a sudden, it's just like, "Oh, I tried to protect you," and. Turns out I really am a father, and it basically all kind of dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's this is the part that I I, I don't know how I feel about. Okay, yeah. Why why don't you tell our audience what happened then? So, uh, Coco, I think shows up a few minutes after they've brought the Zerud, or does he go with them when they? I don't even bring remember. Them? It doesn't matter. I don't remember. What? Whatever. He they they show up at the uh healing spring, whatever it is, and because the tree got pulled down there, the water all flowed out faster than normal, so it doesn't have the same healing property. I immediately thought uh, to myself, Suicune, sh- Suicune, fix the water like you did in Pokemon Forever. Except don't make it suck this time. Yeah, so we end up uh was it uh Saru- or uh Coco starts going, Well, I'll just use this move. Because I am a Pokemon, and then he uses the power of the jungle to heal Z- uh, Dada Zeru. It's like, wait, yeah, what? yeah. I, I didn't hate this, but I was conflicted. Like, what? Like, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, it's again. I don't hate it, but it's just weird. I, I guess the only thing, like. I can understand in the sense of, oh, well, well, if you, like, the force itself has so much healing power within it, if somebody tries hard enough, it could save them. Um, I guess in a sense that might be what they're going for, and if so, that's kind of a subtle way of doing it. it but I don't know. It was, I can understand if somebody were to say, I didn't like that. I mean, it's better than, oh, I'm going to cry, oh, all these Pokemon are going to cry so Ash stops being stoned. I'll, it's better than that, but it's still not perfect. Yeah, so, um, and then the scientists finally completely betray Zed uh, in the battle, and they reveal that the battery pack is on the back of the uh, giant spider walker, and that's the weak point. If they hit it there, they can destroy it. This was the worst face turn ever. Like, none of these scientists really did anything for redemption, other and it wasn't even them. It was the one guy who was controlling it before he got thrown off by Zed. He was like, oh, yeah, there's a spot in the back. I'm like, what took you so long to do that? Side note, though, this was a pretty awesome scene. Like, all the movement, the animation was super fluid with all the jungle mm-hmm. Pokemon and the Zaru going after each going after it. Seriously, this would have made an awesome video game. Yeah, it was very fluid, uh, especially for uh pokemon because a lot of times they don't do the best when it comes to fluid motions i've noticed yeah Yeah, but you know you know you want to know what i've made and so basically he threw everybody helping each other out pikachu uses iron tail to smash open to smash the weakness and the machine basically shuts down Um, Mm -hmm. the only thing that like as cool as it was the only thing i would have rather had is if the zaru would use their vines and tied the legs of the spider and tied the legs of the spider up and caused it to collapse. It worked in Battlefront. Yeah, that would have been cool to see. Um, 
So I'm trying to think, because um, he's not in the spider walker when it collapses, if I remember correctly. He's gotten out and yeah, so that starts trying running to escape. off, and he starts diving to get to the tree. He would, and they try and stop him. When I'm not 100 percent sure why, he doesn't seem like he has anything on him that could do that much more damage. But Coco uses his, the vines on his arms to stop him, and I'm thinking, oh, sure. I mean, once you he- once you heal a mythical Pokemon, I guess using vines on your hands just comes second nature. But they stop him and everything, and the day's basically saved. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, uh, doesn't isn't it revealed that uh, Team Rocket turned in the video anonymously, showing yeah. that what he did? Yeah, because they because they end they also ended up saving Ash and Coco when they got kidnapped in one of the trucks. Mm-hmm. Basically, and they ended up telling the guy on duty when he was guarding the truck so they wouldn't get out. Hey, we got this. It's like, oh, thanks. I'm like, you're an idiot. You're an idiot, dude. But they basically, and then Ash turns to Jake and he's like, so um, are we good to go? And James is like, yeah, go do your thing. I'm like, did he? You know it. Because we know Team Rocket, deep down, will always find a way to do the right thing. Especially in the movies. Even when Ash and the gang recognize them, they'll do that. So, did Ash mm-hmm. recognize them? Or was he just like, you know, they don't seem like they're going to... These scientists don't seem like they're going to stop us, so... Later. I still think that Ash could be Giovanni's son, and that he hired Team Rocket as his babysitters on this journey. Oh, dear God. Uh, hey, we, we can get started on that fanfic comic another week, but this is not, but not this time. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we get to, I guess, kind of the conclusion of everything. Um, the scientists, the Pokemon of the jungle, the Zarude, and Ash and Coco are all, uh, I guess, replanting the trees, planting new trees to replace the ones that the spider walker destroyed when they walk through. Yeah, and Sharon's like, hey, please, we beg for... We're begging for your trust so we can fix this. And the Zaru basically fix everything and plant more trees. And I'm like, that's another thing that bothers me. These scientists have, I don't know. I don't know. In my opinion, in you shouldn't be begging for trust. You should be begging for forgiveness. and Or no, you should be owning up to what you did. We messed up. Like the whole line of, oh, we're begging for your trust. You don't deserve trust right now. You, I figured they should at least get taken in for questioning or something like that. I don't know. But the, but I guess happy ending and everything. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, so one of the things I wanted to discuss... Uh, well, I guess before we get there, let's finish up the description of everything. Um, and Coco wants to go on a journey on his own. And Saru kind of... Dada kind of pushes him away. But deep down, it's like, a, I know what you have to do. And basically come back when you're ready. And he says bye to Ash. I thought he was going to go with Ash for a second. Like, hey, let's go. Let's go on a journey. I'm like, so is he going to be in the next movie? Or what's happening? Yeah, and I still don't quite understand what Coco's journey's goal is. Because they say, oh, it's like Pokemon Master kind of thing. It's uh, He wants to uh, be the bridge to connect people and Pokemon. It's like, what the hell does that mean? Well, but more importantly, how are you connecting people in Pokemon? Like, aren't we kind of already connected? Yeah, I mean, it was part of the whole the whole point of the movie was that hey, if Pokemon are hurt, then people will probably be hurt as well. Yeah, yeah, but overall, they go off off the narrator the narrator talks, and basically, that's that's it. it so some. Overall, some some nitpicks aside, this was I thought it was a really I thought it was a very good movie. Not great, but very good. Yeah, it was entertaining. Again, while it does have environmental messages, which they, uh, which I've said I think before on our podcast, I don't normally like because they're they're always very forced and down your throat it's not here it's they tell a good story with the message in here i think that is correct and i the animation's nice i really like the background music it has enough moments that it feels human but enough moments where like it still feels it's pokemon like it's still it's a good family picture you know besides the whole i killed your parents deal and it's also kind of nice 
I, well, we may discuss this more, but Ash really isn't the main character. Coco's the main character. That is Ash correct. is a supporting character here, and that works somehow. Yeah, Ash is. You know, I actually think I'm over the years. I'm starting to prefer Ash as a as a support character, which is kind of what he is in Journeys, but but I felt like this was handled better. Yeah, because again, it, it was Coco's story, and while they they mention Ash's uh, wish to be a Pokemon master and give hit some details for him. It, the story centers around Coco. So Ash could have been replaced with any random trainer pretty much. And yeah. it would have worked. Also, a shiny Celebi at the, at, appears at the end because apparently it's like, oh, once Ce- Celebi appears, that means everything is right within the forest or something like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. Let's see. So, it, again, there wasn't any real major, major, major flaws. Like something that I could think of that would ruin the movie or affect how I would feel, really. The only other thing I'd have is it but it did feel a little on the long side, especially towards the end. Once everything was cleaned up, and there was, I'm like, oh God, there's still like 10 minutes left of this movie. Mm-hmm. But uh, like, other than that, though, that it's, it's a minor thing. I at least felt like it was at least close to being over by the time I was ready for it to be over. So I'll give it a pass for that. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I did, I did kind of notice that as well, I guess, with, okay, we have the conclusion, here's them planting trees, and they could have ended it there and had the credits roll over them all standing there and then, or all around the forest working on planting new trees and stuff, and that could have been the end. Yeah. But overall, though, I like I love Team Rocket in this movie. Coco was a pretty good mm-hmm. character. Dada was... I hate call I, as much as I hate calling him that was a good character. Everything more or less made sense. A couple of nitpicks aside, I re- I recommend this movie. Probably out of all the newer generation of Pokemon movies, sit from I Choose You to The Power of Us, and then this one, I guess technically you could count Detective Pikachu. This is pro- this was probably my favorite. Yeah, I think I would agree. Um, I don't know. Detective Pikachu is kind of off on its own. It's a weird, fun story, so I'd watch that as well. But yeah, oh, oh also including Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution, but that that almost doesn't even count. We've already reviewed that, so yeah, we're <laughs> we're not reviewing we're not reviewing it again. Anything else we want to talk about before we close things out? Um, so how uh, what did you think of the Zarude's uh, relationship with the other Pokemon, where they were? very territorial and even attacked the other Pokemon, not just humans. I wasn't huge on it primarily just because I would understand if the Pokemon were like attacking them or them or trying to steal their secrets, but it seemed more like the Pokemon were just like, look, just let us heal and we'll go away, that sort of thing. But it's one also one of those things where their pride made them too strong. And in the end, they did learn their lesson. They did learn to help and work with the other Pokemon. So I can give it a pass, especially since with the, nobody, and like, everybody seemed to be okay. Nobody died except Kodo's parents, but who knows? Yeah, and that, this is probably the most violent uh, Pokemon movie with, because there's actually death in it. Yeah, that we basically I mean, see, we basically see this death. Yeah, because I mean, what is the next one? The um, Volcanian one where we actually saw guns, and that's the only oh, other. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think because none of the others really have violence of the death variety, except for probably the first movie, which was, I think I... it was censored because it's supposed to be an actual death. It's not. He turns to stone. Yeah, well, to be fair, the remember in Pope Lucario and the Mystery of Mew, everybody gets absorbed by these blob things, and it's pretty much every, all the humans basically get taken up. I'm like, Jesus Christ, what's happening? And, and the whole time, that. yeah, I was also thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, sweet coon, go fix the water so you can help Dada. I'm like, and somebody should have shown them and been like, oh, we can't, oh, sweet coon can't be here. Why? Some kid caught him and he's at a lab somewhere. It's just, 
It's just we could bang its head on Cerise Lab's window trying to get out. And go and goes like you know. And goes goes like I feel like I should let you out for something. Oh well. Ooh, Raikou, I should go catch that. Oh God. Yeah. Oh, I I can't wait till Pokemon Journeys comes back because there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about, but it, it's not the time or the place. That'll, pro that'll probably be either very end of this year or beginning of next year because I do I. It looks like it's a December release for the next part of that. It sucks because I get it spoiled for so much stuff, but we only talk about the dub, and I really want to talk about the sub and how it's pissing me off. Yeah, unfortunately, with us getting major releases, the the sub keeps jumping. But we'll get that could be another discussion for another day of why subs that that'd be interesting. We could discuss subs versus dubs at one point. Sure. Anything else before we close it out? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think we've covered pretty much everything that this movie had. Yeah. So, ladies, gentlemen, and others, what did you guys think of this movie? Did you like it more than we did, somehow? Did you hate it somewhere in between? Any parts that you missed that we should have been talking about? Let us know, and, what are your, and what's some stuff you'd like to see in the next Pokemon movie, which hasn't even been remotely announced yet? And it'll probably be announced sometime early next year. Probably I would have missed. Probably by Pokemon Day for at least the Japan release. So we'll know what it is soon, probably. Yeah, and do you like these new style of Pokemon movies where it's just Ash by himself and then the character of the, the character of the movie? Or do you like the old old style involving his traveling companions? I'd like to like we'd like to hear about that. And if you like this format of uh, our videos, let us know. We I guess we can go back and watch some of the older ones and review them. Yeah, um, and pe people consistently tell me that the that their favorite set of movies are the Hoenn movies. So we, so, and I, I want to include one thing for the Hoenn movies if we do that. I'd like to include the Mirage special that nobody seems to talk about anymore. I can understand that. Yeah, so Something we Something else we should probably look into completely reviewing is the uh, Pokemon Chronicles as well. Yeah. Because there's only I, a handful of episodes in there interesting stories oh i want to talk to you about pokemon chronicles we can talk about that after the video but for hoenn we'd be doing the mirage special jirachi deoxys and the lucario movie so those are the ones we can focus on but i think i think we, we can close out i think we're we're good to go and i so, think he forgot one leave that in the comments oh, right, the, mis the mystery the mystery him. dungeon specials excellent so we can cover the Mystery Dungeon uh, Specials too at else. some point. So we will catch you guys next time. This has been Alex. And Richard. And you've been listening to the Anime Egotist, where my co-host knows better. Good night. And peace easy.